Hi, today I'll be introducing array indexing in NumPy's and talk about how to access data in arrays, specifically accessing just single elements in an array. You can follow along with me by downloading the Python notebook in the link in the description. Open up the notebook in either Jupyter Notebooks or Colabs. And in this case, I'm using Google Colabs, as you can see in the icon, uh, by the icon in the upper left-hand corner. So let's get started uh, with accessing single elements in an array. So I'm using the same notebook as my last video. Uh, so I've actually already built uh, the X1, X2 arrays, and it's, it's just already in memory for me. Uh, but if you're starting fresh and you have this notebook open, what you can do is actually just go up and execute the line of code here that actually builds the X1, X2, and X3 arrays. So actually, I'll just execute it again. I'll go down. I want to see if my X1 has been built. And it has, right? This is a six element array with uh, six integers. Uh, you can also call it like a, like a one by six array um, as well. And so <clears throat> what, what we're gonna cover is just how to access certain numbers. So sometimes you wanna access the five, you wanna access um, you know, the three, um, and really, how do we do that? How do we do that in Python? How do we do that in NumPy's? So if I wanted to access uh, the value five here, really it's all about um, positioning, right? Like what is the position that I want to, uh, to access? And um, the way NumPy works is that each element has basically an address and it, the address always starts at zero. So this right here, the value five would be zero. This uh, zero here would have an address of one. And then the three would have an address of two. This second three would have an address of three and then four and then five. So what we're gonna do is the way you access an, uh, the, the value of an array is by typing in the position. So if I wanted the value five, I know that it's in the first position. The first position, um, its location is denoted by the value zero. So if I execute this, I get a five. If I wanna access the, um, the fifth element, right? So it's uh, zero, one, two, three, four. So it's really the fifth element though, because it's five, zero, three, three, seven, one, two, three, four, five. Um, the address for the fifth element is the value four. So I just in, in case that in um, you know brackets and I get the value seven. So always have these square brackets whenever you want to access single elements. That's, that's just the syntax for it. Right, easy enough. So um, another way of accessing elements in an array is uh, by using negative indexes, uh, negative positioning, right? And so the reason for this is what if you have an array that's like a million, a million elements long or a thousand elements long, or sometimes you don't even know how, how large an index actually is. And in order to then get the last value, you would have to write several lines of code to actually access that value. So, you know, NumPy makes it very easy so that you can access the, the, the values towards the end of the array just by typing in negative numbers. So if I have an array here, and again, what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is maybe make it easier easier for you and have the X1 displayed here. If I wanted to access the nine, and maybe I didn't know the number of elements in this array, I just type in a negative one. Negative one just means that it's the, the first value in, um, the, the last value in the, in the array. And then a negative two just means it's the second to last value in that array. So if I execute these lines of codes, I should get a nine. And then in this one, I should get a seven, which is exactly what I get. And so if I kind of want to just complete this exercise, you can do negative three here, 
uh, execute that, you get a three. And so um, it's it's really easy just to just to go backwards as it is to go forwards uh, when you're trying to uh, to display single elements in an array. So multi-dimensional arrays are is a little bit harder uh, because we're dealing with rows and you're dealing with columns and sometimes if you're dealing with three-dimensional arrays you're dealing with uh, just the the array number in in the X Y Z axis right so it's a little bit harder so we're gonna actually be using X two which is a two dimensional array it's three rows by four columns. So it was also denoted, um, let's see, the size is equal to three comma four, which is the same thing as saying uh, rows and columns. This is important because the first number is always a row and the second number is always a column. Just as you see here, the, the first row is, the first element here is corresponding to a row, and then the second element here, the second number is corresponding to a column. And so zero, zero obviously, obviously means the first position, which is going to be number three, because the first row position is three, five, two, four, and then the first column position is three, seven, one. And if you triangulate those two, zero, zero, you're going to get three. And that's what I'm gonna get when I output this. This one has already been executed. Um, so two, zero, as you know, is as it says, it's one, one right here. Uh, that's because this is position zero, this first row. Position one would be the second row and position two would be this last row. So you have in this two, two uh, value, you have the this third row, one, six, seven, seven, and then this zero here corresponds to the column, which is the first column, right? So it's three, seven, one, and then if you triangulate those two, you get basically the value one. That position is what you get, and so if I, Execute well. I executed that before the start of this video, and I get what I think I'm gonna get, which is one. So now we're gonna deal with negative numbers. So position two in the row uh, in the row um, parameter, which is the last row. So position two here is the third row, and then negative one, right? So what does negative one mean? Negative one means it's the last element in that array or in that in that position. So that's gonna be the last column because we're in this column uh, parameter here. So if we are in the last row, last column, we should be able to get a seven. And that's exactly what we get. All right, so this this will really just take practice because it's kind of difficult uh, to always remember that the first position is zeros, um, and that kind of throws a lot of people off because you have to kind of calibrate that in your head uh, every time you're trying to figure out what value you're going to get from um, typing these, uh, typing the address or the positions in. Let's just quickly talk about just modifying values. If I wanted to change things up, so again, I'm gonna display X2. If I wanted to change a value in this array, and maybe I wanted to change the value three to a value 12, I need to first be able to access that position. So the first position is uh, the first element in this array is position zero, zero, right? Because it's zero is the first row, zero is the first column. And if I, if I actually, I'm gonna just delete this real quick and remove this. If I find this position, it's the value three. So in order for me to modify it, and I'm just gonna modify it with 12 to be consistent, uh, consistent with the note notes, I get 
that. Nothing is outputted, but if I go back and output and display x2, I should have a 12 here, right? So what if we wanted to, to change the value of seven? Well, all I would have to do is access the third row and then access the last column, which is gonna be negative one. And I'm gonna change it to zero, to a value of zero. So seven should then be a zero. And then I'm gonna print it out again. And I get that, right? I get exactly what I think I'm gonna get. All right, so one important thing, this is gonna be the last concept. One important thing to note is data types. And I mentioned in my last video, data types is a very, very important attribute that I use a lot in my, that I'm always recalling in my, in my coding. Um, so if I want to know what the data type of X1 is, I can just simply do this. I know it's an int 64. That means that every, every number in X1 is a 64 bit integer. So what if I actually want to replace the five with a float, with a 3.14159? That's not an integer, right? So obviously by the notes it says this will be truncated. So let's actually look at and see how that, that works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna execute this line of code. This line of code is basically saying for the first value, for the first position, which is a value of five, let's replace it with pi. 3.14159, right? And then let's display it. You don't get 3.14, you get the value three. And then if I try to display what the D type is again, it stays consistent with int 64. So that's what Python, that's what NumPy is always gonna force. It's gonna basically force a consistent data type for the entire array. So just be wary of that. Because if you wanna work with floats, then have, have a, an array that is created initially with float numbers and explicitly uh, called the D type, the data type, a float, then your entire array will be a float. But if you start an array with an integer, it will be an integer even if you, you're adding floats or strings to that array, all right?